we have found another very cool tiny house here in Austin, and I wanted to introduce you to Davis Richardson. You designed and built this. I did, a few years ago before I started architecture school here at, uh, at UT. Okay, so tell me about that process. Like, how old is it? So we built it in the summer of 2016, so it's about three and a half years old now. Um, it was very much a DIY process. Uh, it was actually a pretty funny story. I graduated college, a good friend of mine who was from my hometown, we were going back to Atlanta for the summer, and he was like, hey, we need to build something this summer. And we found a trailer uh, for our tiny house, and I was like, hey, I need a place to live in Austin. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So I was like, okay, well, you're, this is gonna be our summer project. We're doing this every day. And, uh, and we ended up making it work. I mean, I, I designed it, uh, and then we just spent the summer l looking on YouTube, trying to figure out how to build a house. I had a little bit of knowledge as, as a design background, but um, yeah. it, was a, it was very much a, a learn on the go process and designed it quickly and, um, and spent about 10 weeks over the summer putting it together. And okay, and were you thinking this is an affordable way to live yeah. through, while you're in college? When I was looking at Austin, I mean, anyone who's here knows it's, it's a really expensive place to live and it yes. has been for the last few years. Um, and I was coming for grad school and I just felt like, you know, this is gonna be a, in the long run an affordable way to live. Um, it, it's a sustainable way to live. It's a lot smaller, literally a much smaller footprint. And how big is it? It's 240 square feet. So it's okay. an eight foot by 24 foot trailer. Eight by 24. Eight by 24. Okay. So, well, let's go inside. All right, I'm let's check it out. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, this is beautiful. I love the natural life it comes in. Yeah, so that was, when we were designing it, that was like one of the big things was, obviously in a tiny house, you have, you're pretty constricted. It's pretty narrow through here. Um, one of the goals was, how can you make it feel a lot more spacious? And we wanted to do that for natural light and, and taller ceilings. So that's why it slopes from back to front like this. Um, uh -huh. as opposed, a lot of them you see have a shed roof on the side. Yes. That works for some people, but for me, I wanted to try to get the, the roof as high as you could towards the back. Um, and use that to bring in as much light all around as possible. Uh -huh. um, and, and you it, used a, like a polycarbonate on the top. This, what, what was the moment where you're like, this is what I'm gonna, cause I think this section above the top, the polycarbonate with the stud framing is what, it's what really makes it. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. I think it's definitely kind of the signature thing about it. And it's funny, I mean, it was, it was an idea I had beforehand where uh, the idea was, and you'll see it from the outside, but basically like the base is this kind of wood clad box. Uh, the top or is basically this metal shell that's what takes the, it's solid, it's what takes the wind and stuff when it's on the road. Uh -huh. And so that would be like the kind of protective layer. And then the infill between that would be this like ribbon of light. And so you would have this stud framing that was braced and, and, and had this diffuse light that comes in through the polycarbonate that would really, you know, amplify the space uh -huh. uh, as kind of a, a buffer between those two layers. Um, so that was always the idea from the beginning, but originally it was only going to go up to about, you know, about where this bookcase is on the sides. Um, and we had, it was actually when we were framing it up, we had put the sheathing on, the plywood on the outside. The easiest place to do that uh, in full sheets was across this line. Okay. And we were going to infill all this, but that required special cuts. See, that's so cool though. And so we had framed out the rest of it, and so this part was solid, uh -huh. uh, the roof and the front was solid. And this was all open and I was looking at it and I was like, Tanner, Tanner was my friend who helped me build that. I was like, this is amazing. The way that that thing goes all the way around. And, and it, I was like, let's just, let's just do the, the cross bracing all the way through and then fill that in with polycarbonate and have it go all the way down. And, and I'm so glad we did that because, uh, you know, most of the light is back there, but the light that you get around here and as it comes in through the shelves, uh -huh. um, is a, it's a pretty feature. cool feature. I mean, just like this right here, I know. it's, it's, um, it's pretty cool. It, it's I'm really glad we did it. It, it, it was a little bit tricky, but um, and we certainly didn't do it perfectly. But um, it the the payoff of it was was it's really great. Perfect. Yeah, you're right. It is a very diffused, beautiful yeah. light, and that's what really makes the space. I think it, the polycarbonate performs. It's a, it's an interesting material. It performs a lot better than glass. Um, it's a little bit thinner than glass, but it it's basically just plastic that is that is double walled, and so it uh -huh. kind of traps air inside of it. Um, so from a thermal standpoint, it works a lot better and it's a little more diffuse than clear light glasses. Um, so that's able to sort of spread out the light throughout the space a lot better, which was, um, it, it was just a really, it really was the right material to use up there. And have you seen any insulation issues with it or do you feel uh, like it, the space heat and heats and cools a well little or bit. efficiently? A little bit. If I could go back and do it again, I'd probably just do another layer of it or do a little bit of, a little bit thicker. Um, in the summer, it can be a little bit much, but you know, 
yeah. on the AC. I mean, in the long, um, you know, long scheme of things, it's it still performs so much better thermally um, than a, even a traditional house does. Um, you lose a little bit of that with the polycarbonate up there, uh, but again, it's better than glass, and it um, the light that it brings in. You know, totally I don't have to have my lights on. Our lights are not on right now. Yeah, um, I love that. So I mean, you the the kind of energy savings you get from there, I think probably uh, Offset offsets it. it yes. Yeah. And you have a great amount of storage in here, actually. Were you, is this something you pre-designed or drew before? Yeah, you have to think about storage yeah. before. It's, I mean, even just your your angles and like hidden spots and copper piping. And I love the details that you put into this place. Yeah, it was, storage was a big thing. That was my biggest concern about going tiny. I, I was not a person, I didn't have a lot. I just graduated college. So like I hadn't, I, I didn't have years of things that I had accumulated, but um, one of the biggest things was, you know, there's just all this stuff that goes into living in a place, um, and you got to make sure you have enough room for it. And I've had actually too much storage almost. Um, but the concept. Too much storage. The, the, believe it or not. We can uh, do a whole video on just having too much yeah. storage in your tiny home. Um, I will say that the idea was to keep it all open. So, um, again, trying to keep the space as open as possible, like not having closed off cabinets that are bulky and have a lot of mass to them and trying to make the space just feel as open and airy as possible. Uh -huh. In hindsight, like maybe some closed cabinets to hide just some of the junk would have been nice. Sure, but, um, sure. Yeah, but ser I really have had more more space than I've needed. Uh, and you have it, this continuous shelf all the way across, which someone that like, of your height can reach. Yes, I, I can. I wouldn't be able to. Quite, but, quite easily. But um, that, that adds a lot. I mean, you're doubling your storage yeah. right there. Yeah, that, that has been a good catch-all. I put some of my crappy architecture models from school up there and <laughs> and all the things that I, I really don't use too often are the things that, because I mean, the, the one thing about having open shelving is all your stuff has to be nice. Yes, <laughs> all your yes. stuff has to be, especially, especially as a designer, like mm -hmm. you want you want people to come in and go, ooh, your, your choice of, of mugs coffee or mugs or is, is nice. <laughs> yeah. um, so any of this, any of that stuff that's like not designy, I put up there. Right, <laughs> totally. So that it's out of, out of view of uh, people closer down here. Tell me, yeah, like me, height. yeah, like, I got you. <laughs> you can say it, I'm short. Um, <laughs> So you lived here for how long? So I lived here for three years. I just three got years. married. And uh, my wife and I started dating uh, in my second semester of architecture school. And immediately she was like, if we get married, I'm not living there. She, <laughs> she loves that. it. She loves it. She yeah. wants to keep it. Um, but she does not want to live here. <laughs> Why is that? Um, well, you know, I, I designed it for me. Um, and it, it would it works. It could work for a lot of people. It can work for the right couple. But for us, it was just like, we need a little more space for the for the both of us. Um, it just I think yeah. I think this was uh, a little more than what she was willing to sign up for. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's okay. The, the The goal for me was not to live in it long term. It was to have it through grad school and then um, you know hopefully find somebody else who can take good care of it and it'll work for them. Tell me about like the cost when you lived here in college. You was it? It was pretty much paid off because you built it yourself. Yeah. So the the house itself, the construction costs and everything was all paid off. Um, the Where cost, did you park it? So I parked it um, at a tiny house community here in Austin, which went under. So they're, they are no are longer. No more. Why is that? It was sort of, um, there's still a lot of rumors around it, but basically uh, the people who started it and owned it, um, I don't think went through the proper channels with the city of Austin uh -huh. and said that they did. Um, and they got in trouble. Somebody, somehow the city found out, fire marshal came out and said, you guys need to go through site plan review. Basically, you need to go through the proper channels. Um, and eventually the fines that were adding up, they just had to shut the place down and, and didn't have time to go through all that. In that tiny house village, did they have it set up similar to an RV park for your utilities? Yes. So you paid your utilities through that yes. village? Yeah. So it What was, did they usually cost you? Um, oh, utilities? it's not much at all. I mean, maybe 20 bucks a month. That's all amazing. Told. I mean, I, I, I don't think that that didn't include its change. So I'm at, a, I'm at a different, basically just an RV park now. Um, which is one of the downsides of tiny houses that, that we can talk about a yes. little bit, but um, but so yeah, rent there was three hundred bucks a month to park, which was three hundred a month, which was not bad. That's not um, bad actually. I've heard closer to five and six yeah. and even seven. Yeah, where I'm at now is five hundred a month, um, which is a little bit higher, but you can find the right place if that's a if that's a concern. Um, so this village you were at got shut down, and then what? You get a phone call and you have to move your so tiny house. We get an email and we had to be out in thirty days. Okay. So we had to find another place to go live um, within 30 days. I was actually out of town. It was over the summer. I was working up in Dallas uh, at an internship. Um, so it was pretty stressful because 
Uh, thankfully, I had another place since I was not living there for that summer. But um, but for the people who were there, I mean, they a lot of them had to pack up and just totally leave Austin. Like they just That's packed their crazy. homes up and went back went back home to a small town in Texas where they may have been from. But um, luckily, I found a spot at this RV park that we're at now. Um, but yeah, it was it was not good, yeah. um, and that's that's one of the things about tiny houses is it it tends to it tends to be people who kind of carve their own path, which is really cool and really great. Uh, but you also need to make sure that people are going through the proper channels and that you don't get kicked out of a yes. place. Um, There's so much gray area with this yeah. whole industry, and I find that nobody a lot of times people don't really have the answers yeah. and they just sort of pioneer it and make it up as they go and that's sort of what i did to be honest with, yeah. with this house i mean you know there's we had some inspections done to make sure the electrical was done but you know there's no building permit for this there's right. um you know getting things like insurance is really tough um understanding how it's even titled it's titled as a vehicle you know it's not like titled, an rv yeah it's like an rv the knowledge that you get from living in a place like this is transferable yes. so like it's not just that Amen. we should all live in tiny houses. It's like, I understand what it means to live in 240 square feet. Mm -hmm. So now me and my wife are, are looking at apartments. Instead of going and getting a 1,200 square foot apartment, we might be able to say, well, we can do with 800. That's plenty of space relative to what I had here. Totally. Um, and we have more stuff now, but, um, but you know. It's still four times it's, or three, yeah, three times I mean, what you were living exactly, in. And you're still able, you're able to realize the things that you can do without and the things that you do need. I mean, there are things that I thought I could do without here that, um, or just space, you know, storage space that I thought, oh, I don't need that. Like a good place to put a suitcase. Is, right. There's not a great place for that here. All right, so show me show me some of the design features here. I see you used a lot of, is this birch yeah, plywood? Yeah, this is, this is all birch plywood. Um, most of it is unfinished. The floors and the countertops are finished just to yes. protect them, but everything else is unfinished. And you chose that for aesthetic value, yeah. weight? Yeah it, yeah, it was light. It's easy to work with because it comes in big sheets and I'm mm -hmm. not a carpenter woodworker. Um, and so it was, it was an easy material to work with. It was easier than drywall, the drywall uh -huh. process of mudding and taping and finishing. And drywall cracks. Drywall cracks, homes. which would have been an issue when it's on the road. So plywood just made a lot more sense. Um, Absolutely, I, I love it. Yeah, I like the idea that it would be sort of this monolithic, like it's not monolithic, but that all the, all the material on the inside for the most part is, is plywood. Mm -hmm. And, I and feel it's like, three quarter? Yeah, three -quarter this is, it's mostly three quarter inch. Some of the stuff on, uh, some of the walls are half, half inch. Half inch, uh -huh. um, I wouldn't go thinner than that. The ceiling is actually quarter and it's not so great. It's, it, it's not thick enough to, you can actually, you'll, you can see it bends a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah, um, it'll flex. But and you have a combo move. washer dryer unit. So I do. as a college kid, or you, it's grad, it you're in grad school. It is perfect. This yeah, was perfect? It did was. it dry well? It did. It, it did. did. It, it takes a long time. Yes. So it runs, uh, a full load runs in about like four hours. So it's like an hour to wash things. Four like, hours? Joey, did then, you hear that? With babies, that doesn't work. Oh, I'm sure. I'd be doing laundry all oh, day, every day. Yeah. Well, I already do that. Okay, so you have a barn door. Is this I the do. bathroom? What is what's yeah, in here? Yeah, so this is my this is the bathroom in here. So the um, barn door goes out over the washer so and dryer. So it cantilevers a little bit, cool. which is uh, you step has up. worked out totally fine. But it's just a plywood door. Uh huh. Um, and yeah, and then the bathroom is just the composting toilet and a standing shower, uh, Got it. which has the same metal as the outside. I wanted to tile it, but tile's a little more expensive, and we had some leftover of this, and I thought that was kind of a cool. Yeah. So one place inside that this gets used. Um, it's a nice durable material that sort of connects to the outside. You left a little ledge. I did nice. leave a little ledge for. You What's know, this so. faucet? So that is a um, that is a yeah. water heating faucet. Is it really? So I have a water heater that works, but I like really warm showers, and so um, it it's like it, makes it, it extra. it'll do it right in there. That's cool. that's the heating portion of it. Um, so that worked out well. Just get a nice steamy shower. Is this the living room? Yes. Ah, Frank Lloyd Wright. Yep. That Did was you paint a, this I, in high school? Yes. Really? I'm not a painter, but but That's it was. Cool. I, I like I, it. I found it in my I found it in my parents' like garage or attic when we were home for the summer. I was like, that's better than I remember it. Let's just frame it anyway. So, so this is the. I see your hair. So this is yeah. The hair is the hair is getting a little messed up <laughs> if I don't punch a little bit. So I, I don't spend too much time in here, so my posture remains good. Yes. <laughs> But no, it's right at 6'3". It's, it's very comfortable for me, actually. Yeah, yeah. So you be. have a kind of like walk-in closet situation. Yeah, so this was, uh, again, for me, like, it just made sense. I, yeah, this I basically have a full, yeah, I have a pretty full closet relative to what you might get in a small apartment. So. Or a dorm. I yeah. mean, if you were in yeah. college, and this, this is, is about the same just space what that you I would, would have, get in a dorm. So. Yep. Yeah, so that worked out. That worked out really well, and then just mounted the TV on this wall. Yeah, perfect. That's awesome. And then this is your heating and cooling? That's AC, yeah. 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 So 
when I got in, I just had a little window unit. Um, it eventually gave out, and it, it worked pretty well. This one's a little more, um, has a little more oomph to it. Robust. So it, it worked out, it's worked out pretty well. I like this feature. Was this like an on-the-fly decision? So this actually was one of the things that we, uh, that was from the beginning was a, was a kind of a driving idea behind the interior space. So the idea was that this wall here was basically your utility wall, more or less. Okay. So it's, it's the kitchen, it turns into a bar. This is like you know, your dining room, if you will. Like that's your eating space, and then it turns yeah. into a little standing desk. Um, and I, I don't do a lot of work from here, uh, just because I need a little more space as an architect drawing and stuff. But, but the idea was that, um, that this would be a little bit standing desk to just write things down, um, and then this would serve as some storage space. I so love it. it sort of plays off the angles that are going on outside, and, mm -hmm. um, and it does that too to sort of uh, yep. go from being a counter depth to a, a bar depth. Um, so that's what it does and then it terminates then in the closet down here. And so then this side, of course you have the, the refrigerator and the washer and dryer over there and then the bathroom on this side. But mm -hmm. the, the concept was that this was like your millwork, your millwork wall, and then this was sort of the, um, I guess more utilities if you will. Okay, so shall we go up? Yes, we shall, be careful. This is so cool, Davis. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little spot. It's I love nice the light. Retreat. It's just so, I mean, I'm a light, bright girl. And so I appreciate all the natural light that comes into this place. It's really incredible. And I'm a person who will sleep till 11 or noon if I'm in a dark room. So it was also important because it made me get up. You could put curtains up if you want to. I have to, become but. a fan of rising with the sun. Yeah. I think our bodies are supposed to do that. I think so too. I Just for giggles, I want to see if I can, I mean, obviously can I can't stand, stand in it, but I'm like, <laughs> let's see how. I can just sit up in the bed. I was going to ask that. Like, yeah. are you hitting your head? Not quite. i got to be careful. Okay. But I, I made it so that I could just sit up. I couldn't do it down on this end, but over there I'm good. Um, it is definitely hotter up here. It is warmer. So, they, obviously heat rises. Yeah. Does this get really hot in the summer? It gets warm. Yeah. It gets warm. And I think, I think that's one thing I, I wish I had thought about a little bit more was just how the airflow would work. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a vent. The air right now is not oh, blowing up there. Yep, but I do it. have a vent that blows up here. I have a fan. So yeah. you're able to make it's it. It's enough. You're able to make it work. Um, and I think that, uh, that maybe there may be a couple things, a couple tweaks that could be done to make uh -huh. it a little bit better. But. I have to say, you really did get a ton of storage in here. So. For anybody, you know, that is concerned about, like, having enough storage, I think you did a really good job of, of that. Davis, thank you so much for letting us come tour your tiny house and tell me, so you're you're selling it. How much are you yes. selling it for? Uh, list price is 60000 right now. And where, well, actually, we'll link the um, listing. The listing, yeah. We'll link it on our channel below. But, so you're sort of sad to see it go, not really. A little bit, happy yeah. To, bless someone else with it. Exactly. I think that's a good way to put it. Is it's, it's run its course for me. It's a fantastic house and I'm happy to let somebody else get to experience it. Perfect. Well, I'm so excited I got to see it. Well, I absolutely so love the design. I love how you made it the, the typical box of a tiny home. You, you expanded and exploded that with this very cool polycarbonate detail. Really job well done, man. I love Thank it. You. And congratulations on your recent wedding. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, thanks for all the kind words. I mean, it's it's been such a cool thing to share with people. I mean, it's I, I didn't expect it to be something people would really like care about at all. Um, and so I think to be able to share it with people is, is cool because yeah, it was just an experiment for me, and um, if other people can learn from it and learn from the good stuff, learn from the bad stuff. Then That's right. That's what up. life's all about. Indeed. You guys, thank you so much for joining on our tour of Davis's tiny home. Click the subscribe button if you want to continue watching our content. We'll be putting out stuff every week. Thank you so much for joining. Let's go do something fun outside. It's a perfect Let's day do in it. Austin. It's amazing.